Hello and welcome back to London Cycle Routes. Today I'll be showing you how to cycle from Stoke Newington in North London to King's Cross in Central London. This ride takes about 30 minutes and you can do the whole thing on quiet streets and protected cycle lanes. By public transport the same journey takes just over half an hour so you'll probably save time by cycling this. If you find this video useful or you just enjoy watching it then don't forget to hit the bell icon and subscribe to the channel as I try to post new videos just like it every week. I'd also like to say a big thank you to everyone who supports the channel on Patreon. If you'd like to support it as well you can find the link in the description. Alright let's get going. So we're starting on the corner of Stoke Newington High Street and Stoke Newington Church Street and we're just going to head straight down Stoke Newington Church Street. This road used to be quite busy and not very pleasant to cycle on but just over a year ago Hackney Council installed a bus gate on this street which is basically a sign which says that only buses can pass through this point in the middle and as a result it's removed all through traffic from the street. You're only really likely to run into buses and the odd van or car making a delivery or collecting from a shop on the road itself. They can still access the street but they can't use it as a through route anymore and it's really now a great place to cycle. We're turning off left here down Defoe Road and for the next bit we're going to be following the route of Cycle Super Highway 1 which is really just a signposted route through the back streets. But at the same time as Hackney installed the bus gate on Stoke Newington Church Street they also installed a wider low traffic neighbourhood in this part of town, Stoke Newington. And that's really quietened down all the roads around here. CS1 used to be a terrible route. It was renowned for um, not being very quiet at all. But now it's actually really quite good and you can see we're not running into any traffic whatsoever. It's a good example of how uh, low traffic neighbourhoods can be combined with a back street cycle route and make the whole thing a lot more pleasant. Here's one of the filters here. It's enforced by cameras so if someone were to drive through it they would get a fine. The reason it's been done like that instead of physically closing the street off with bollards is to allow emergency services to get through there if they need to. It seems like it's been quite a successful intervention. Uh, Hackney Council released some figures just this week saying that there are now a thousand more people a day walking down Stoke Newington Church Street which is a major high street and that's probably good news for shops and businesses on there. Cycling is also apparently up by about 40% which is quite a significant transformation in the space of just a year and shows what happens when you make the conditions good for cycling. The next step is probably to um, use some of that reduced traffic flow to widen the pavements on there and maybe put in a bit of planting and stuff like that and really just urban realm to make the whole thing feel a little bit more pleasant. As we showed off in last week's video, Haringey, the council to the north of Hackney, has also improved a lot of CS1 with a low traffic neighbourhood of its own further north around Bruce Grove West Green. So it's gradually becoming a better route. Not all of it is great yet though. This road, Bowling Road, it may look quiet now, but at peak time it's actually quite busy. That should change when Islington introduces its next low traffic neighbourhood called Mild May, which should filter this street at least partially, but unfortunately for that, we're going to have to wait until early 2024. So not next year, but the year after, as that is still at the design stage. But it is funded and it should be happening. Fortunately, we're not on Bowling Road for too long and we quickly turn right onto St. Jude Road. And remember, we're following the CS1 logos on the pavement here. And we go on to Kingsbury Road and you can see here this classic old school filter going through some bollards and the road is nice and quiet again. The reason Islington is taking so long over that next LTN is because they think that if they spend more time consulting then there'll be less outspoken opposition to the policy. I guess we'll have to wait and see whether that's the case or not. Um, for now we're running on this busy road, Bulls Pond Road here, but fortunately we've got this nice two-way protected cycle lane which actually does a really good job of making the route connect up properly although that traffic light could take a very very long time to change to green just a warning generally though i really like the approach taken to building this route really so when we're on back streets you can rely on there being no through traffic on them but when we go onto a main road we get a protected cycle lane and i think that's really a good rule of thumb for how routes should work all around london 
As you can see from the filter we just passed through, another camera in forced closure, we are again in an LTN. This scheme has actually been around for decades and it's really the model for all the other low traffic neighborhoods that have been installed since the pandemic. It's probably the most famous example of a part of town where through traffic had been removed for a really, really long period. And you can see it was mainly done with bollards. Here, we passed through a lot of bollards. All bollard fans should have a lot of fun in this bit of town. Um, we've actually left CS1 now though, and we turn off North Church Road, and we're now following the signs for a route called Q2, or Quiet Way 2, which we're basically gonna be taking most of the way to King's Cross and which is a really similar deal to the good bits of CS1, which we just went through. It's a backstreet route that is largely through traffic free. Um, CS1, which we just turned off by the way, largely runs parallel to the A10, uh, which is the main sort of A road coming in north south through Hackney into the city. It's funny to think because that route was originally installed because Hackney Council, back when it was conceived, didn't like the idea of on main road protected cycle lanes so they cooked up a backstreet route instead now hackney council has since changed its view on that and it seems very happy to install protected lanes where they're needed so you know we may still one day get cycle lanes on the a10 but for now cs1 is becoming an increasingly pretty good um, alternative to using it as more ltns are installed just a quick note about the quality of this video, by the way, in the previous video, I said that I was gonna start shooting in 4K quality, but I did say that I had some older footage which hadn't been shot in 4K. Um, this is one of those videos and it's not been shot in 4K, it was shot in HD 1080p, but I've decided to scale it up to 4K, even though that won't actually increase the video quality on my copy, because apparently when you upload as 4K, YouTube gives you a much better bit rate and showing even if the video isn't actually much better quality. So hopefully things look, should look a little bit better than most of the older videos, if not quite as good as the true 4K videos that I've shot. Thanks again to everyone on the Patreon for funding the channel and making it possible for me to get the equipment I need to do this sort of thing. If you really like what we're doing here, you could always join them as well or you could just hit subscribe on the channel and see the new videos as they're released. And certainly hit like on this video if you do like it, because it'll help other people find it. We're still following the route of Q2 through the St. Peter's low traffic neighborhood, which is one of Islington's. And one thing you notice here is that this road is very much laid out for speed, isn't it? It kind of has these uh, sweeping corners and there's uh, it's clearly engineered for a much higher level of traffic than it used to have and it would be really interesting now that the through traffic has been removed from the road um, and it's nice and quiet like this and a really suitable area for cycling to see maybe the urban realm redesigned a bit so you could get a bit more planting in there you could have wider pavements because clearly the sort of width of road the carriageway isn't really required for the amount of traffic that's going down there this part of Islington is very nice and very interesting. We're about to turn onto a street called Colebrook Row, which has a storied history. You'll notice that it is extremely wide and has a kind of a green path going through the middle of it, which is quite unusual. The carriageway on the other side of that green path is also Colebrook Row. And that's because there used to be a river running down here. Um, that's what it was referred to as the New River, although it isn't very new anymore because it was built in the early 1600s uh, to supply fresh drinking water to London, believe it or not. However, it has since been put underground, so there's now a park running down the middle of the street, which I think is really nice, although maybe not quite as nice as an actual river. More recently, Colebrook Row has also been notable as the home of one Boris Johnson, although I don't think he lives there anymore. It is interesting to think though, because Quiet Way 2 was a route delivered while Boris Johnson was mayor, and I think he lived there at the time, so it did actually go right past his house, which is interesting to consider. Watch out for the traffic light here, and when it goes green, head into Chadwell Street, here, through traffic is actually removed by a rank of cycle hire bikes left in the middle of the road, which is nice in some respects, although the gap that we had to go through is a little bit on the narrow side, so 
if someone is coming in the other direction, things can get a little bit cozy, so do be careful there. One interesting quirk of Middleton Square, which we're in right now, is that it was hit during the Blitz. And if you look at the bottom of the houses, there's the whitewashed stonework rather than the brickwork. Some of the houses on the opposite side of the square, which we didn't actually see, um, have brickwork all the way down. And those are the houses that were rebuilt in the 1940s after the earlier ones were obliterated. Amwell Street, by the way, which we're on now and just turning off, is a little bit too busy for my liking. It should really either have a bus gate on it or protected cycle lanes. It's not really a suitable cycle route, although you are only on it briefly. We then head down Marjorie Street here, and you can just see on the right there, there is a protected lane for when you're going up the hill. When you're going down the hill, you do mix with general traffic. Cross this rather large junction when the lights give you the green and you can use the painted cycle lane. Weirdly, despite this street being seemingly built for huge volumes of traffic, I never really see very much on it. Make sure you don't miss the turning, however, into Pakenham Street. This is a back street way into King's Cross. Now, we're going to take a slightly different route to King's Cross than I normally do in the other videos. So if you think you know what I'm going to do, you might be surprised. Normally what I do is I head down Midland Road and I end up at the back end of St Pancras Station. But we're actually going to end up in the front of King's Cross Station proper. And we're going to do that by taking a slightly different route and turning off a slightly different way to which I normally do. Obviously, depending where in King's Cross you want to go, you may want to choose one or the other route. If you don't know the area that well, this way has a few twists and turns, so it might be worth downloading the map of the route, which you can find in a link in the description. And that's a GPS GPX file and will work on any app or device. Now, we turn off right here down Seaford Street. Make sure you don't miss the turning like I nearly did. The layout of the streets around here means that you're not going to run into any through traffic. It's really just an access road for the housing estates around here. We're also going to pass through one of my favourite little high streets in London called Cromer Street. As we go around this corner, you'll catch a sight of the church here. That's Holy Cross Church on the left. That was consecrated in 1888 and its church bell actually comes from the HMS Pearl, a, uh, a British warship which one of its benefactors commanded. Something else of note on Widbourne Street here. Firstly, you can see it's filtered with these bollards. And secondly, you can see McGlynn's Free House on the right, which is a fantastic pub. And the two things combine on a sunny afternoon after work um, because the very low traffic levels mean that people spill out onto the road drinking and chatting. And it's really a lovely scene and a great pub and a great spot for it. Eagle-eyed viewers will have spotted St Pancras Station at the end of Widbourne Street, but we're not going there today, as I said. We're going to go to King's Cross Station, and the way that we do that is we go down St Chad Street, and then we turn left at Birkenhead Street. And there you can see King's Cross, the big train shed, dead ahead of us. It's unmistakable. You can go and use this cycle crossing here if you can get around the thoughtlessly parked dockless bike. Just cycle over there and you'll find yourself in the forecourt of King's Cross Station. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching that guys. I think you'll agree that that was quite a decent route and it's quite a nice ride. A couple of bits can still do with a bit of improvement and I'm really looking forward to the mild May low traffic neighbourhood which will really make the whole thing, the whole of this route essentially pretty much traffic free. Um, for now make sure you hit subscribe on the channel and please do hit the like button as well as it does help other people find the video. And if you really like what we're doing on the channel, you can always contribute to the Patreon. There's a link in the description below. Thanks very much. Let me know in the comments what you think, and I'll see you again next time.